Mami. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, we're very sorry for the delay in the program. Inshallah, we're going to start this session now. We have um, our doctor in the house already. And um, doctor, you've been made a co-host on this platform. So inshallah, uh, you can unmute yourself. I can see that you bumped yourself. And inshallah, we'll start this uh, alpha taha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. 
Ar-Rahmanir-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Siratal Mustaqim, Siratal Ladhina An'amta Alayhim, Ghairul Magdubi Alayhim, Waladdalim. Amin. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Inzati Amma Yasifud, Wassalamun Ala Al-Mursalim. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Salu ala Rasulul Kareem Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inshallah doctor you have the floor Ma, you can go ahead Okay, no. how many minutes do I have? <laughs> um, the whole session is actually two hours So you have the first hour Between now and three o'clock So that we can have um, Q&A afterwards inshallah So now I think you have about 40, about 50 minutes Inshallah We might not even spend Oh, that's it. Um, I remain my humble self, um, Dr. Rahima Iwisheson, and I welcome each and every one of us to this um, wonderful session. Um, we pray that, um, inshallah, we would at be able to gain one or two um, take homes and um, take home from this um, session. And it's going to serve as um, turning points in our lives. Um, I welcome us all once again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, so I've been um, asked to speak to the topic health intelligence, effective paths to a healthier life. Um, but before I start, I would like to introduce um, with um, one of the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, that encourages us to um, watch out or take care of five things before five things. I'm very sure the majority of us will be um, conversant with this hadith. And it fascinates me, the hierarchy with which um, the... Um, things or uh, the the things in or the message that was passed in this um, address was kind of um, listed. The first was that we should try as much as possible to take care of our youth before old age. And the second is we should try to take care of our health before illness and then every other ones that we are all aware of which is the richness before poverty our free time before work or we get um, preoccupied and our life before death but what i want to pick out is the the essence in the the, the hadith is the two um the, the first two parts which is the youth before old age and the health before Ill, illness so it, even before um the advent of medicine Islam has actually laid down guidelines for us. And if we should be thankful that the teachings of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, as all should sell, serve as guide um, to all our daily um, activities or to our overall um, existence. So with that said, um, I will start with picking on um, the content of the topic that I've been told to speak to, which is the first part is health intelligence. So how do we explain or define health intelligence? Um, it can be interpreted or we can say that health intelligence is the interpretation. That is the meaning we give to, to something or the analysis how we break it down, the processing, what stages it goes through, or the generation of useful products. What do we mean by products? It could be in terms of building networks, maybe health networks, how you connect to people in terms of sourcing for um, healthcare, use of um, or building artificial intelligence, robotics in healthcare, or mobile apps that we all conversant with um, nowadays to mention but a few, that is putting all these things together to assist practitioners, clinicians, and users of health or decision makers or policy makers to have a sense of what um, 
the surveillance or population health is all about and how we can use this data to help people or to achieve goals or to improve health. Um, I guess with all this grammar and the content that I have, um, the, the content in the definition of health intelligence that I have tried to, to break down, it might still seem a lot of technical jargon to some of us and not making any um, meaningful sense. The reason is that when we are talking about health intelligence, conceptually, it actually explains more of population health. But I guess the essence of our discussion here today is to reach out to us individually, is to enable us to know what we need to do to better our health. So rather than um, dwell so much on the topic that I've been given, which is health intelligence, that I feel it might be a little bit technical and difficult for us to understand. I will try to explain health intelligence to us in a layman's language and in a better way that we can all understand, while I'll be focusing on those areas that I've been told to dwell on particularly. And those, let me quickly itemize those. I'm, I'm sure that when the Zoom messages were going around, we would have a fair idea of the areas that I'm going to touch. And those areas are in hierarchy of which I've listed them, the realities and the myth that surrounds um, chronic diseases, self-medication and whatever comes after it the various platforms or health facilities that we can explore or we can that we can actually use to get healthcare and various options that we might have with healthcare financing how we can fund our health and we'll wrap it up with general tips that can help us live healthier lives so like i mentioned earlier rather than focusing on health intelligence i will twist i will give a tweak to the topic in a, in, in a way that we will better understand. And I will use the term health literacy rather than health intelligence. So what do we understand by health literacy? Um, I have a hand up. I'm trying to see, okay. So I would like one or two people to actually chip in what they understand about health literacy, just one or two um, contributions. Please, if you like to, okay, I can see a condary scat for lack of reason of her hand. So I will allow, I will mute you now. Um, just hold on, I will mute. So if you want to contribute, just raise up your hand, we will unmute you from here. Okay, so um, Akondoris, please try to unmute yourself from your end. Just try to unmute yourself and you can talk. Hello, Akonde. I think she's the only one raising up um, okay. her hand, I guess. So. I don't think she's there. I don't think okay. she's there. So I think we can move on. Um, yes. I asked the question, what we do understand by health literacy. Um, to the layman, we all, we all understand what to be literate. Yeah, someone, is, I can get a response, response from someone. Um, and I, okay, healthy in every aspect, eating wise, physical exercise. Yeah, that's a close. Can we have one more response? So if you cannot, okay, if you cannot raise up your hand to talk, you can always also send in a chat message. Our doctor can read it, inshallah. And uh, moderator. I'm here, ma'am. Yeah, so um, I want to crave your indulgence. Okay, ma'am. Um, I would like to know if code mixing will be ideal 
I, I because think it will, it will be it will be a better yeah. option, ma. Exactly. Because Please. I think too much, too much of this deeply. drama. I think too much exactly. of this drama might not be helpful to some because I can see some of our mothers are into explaining in Yoruba or in yeah, well, it's only Yoruba. It is only Yoruba that I can. <laughs> At least so, yeah. majority of people online can speak Yoruba, I guess. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I guess the the house will permit me to code mix so that we'll better convey the message to the. We well, are permitted, ma'am. Okay, great. There's another one. Um, health literacy is understanding what constitutes building and destruction of one's health. Great. I'm happy with that um, definition. Yeah. So uh, I think we, to an extent, we have a fair idea. And I think it, it, it helps us to understand better the content of our discussion today than just um, viewing it based on health intelligence, which is a lot uh, more um, grammatical. So um, I will sum up, since we have a fair idea of what health literacy, I will just um, give a broader um, explanation. It means being in charge being in control. The machine saw your mama, the machine saw you, boy, your mama saw you, buy and so that our mommy was, our daddy was on one in the house, they would understand what I'm trying to say. So being in charge, being in control, it means that I need, hey, Okay. Moderator, yeah, me knew about where I'm, if it's in Martin Scratch, enjoy, build me out. It means um, you, I need Kappa. Lati she ntoto lori ilera rawa. Ani mo, ani, we have that knowledge. We have everything within our reach. Ni kapa wa, lati she ntoto ni pa ilera wa. So why is it important? Surveys, studies have shown that strong health literacy, that having that knowledge, if we have that knowledge, it makes it, it enables people develop that um, skill and confidence to make informed decisions. And what do I mean by informed decisions? For instance, you, you are sick or you have a relative that is sick. And then because you are well informed, you know what you should do. You read about these issues. You know what the statistics is all about. You've seen or you've experienced a lot of cases. You can serve as a turning point to the lives of that of to the life of that person. You can be a safe haven for that person to advise. Ah, well, man, so fellow can come by you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lori doctor, this is what you are supposed to do. That is the reason for us to be literate. That is to be able to make informed decision either for us or for our family members or for loved ones around us. Another reason why we need to be literate is that it enables us to be active partners in health decision making. You try to seek help for your health situation. You don't just swallow everything you are told who clients think. You need to know more. Anilati mo ogi alosi liya e iwoson. Inko kamba inshemi. Okay, doctor, what's up? Okay, okay. Inko kamba elo inshie o. As the owner of yourself, the owner of your body, and who is very, very um, particular about having a good health, you should be able to work hand in hand with your healthcare provider. Perhaps in terms of um, compliance, that is the meaning of being active partners. We are helping yourself. At the same time, you are helping those that are caring, that, that provide care for you. That is being active partners in our care. And one of, and the last reason that I will, I will mention that pertains to us as individuals is that once we are literate, we will know where and who to turn to for help. And that is what we explain in terms of having that 
effective ways to navigate healthcare system. That's at the individual level. But at the population level or public level, we can talk in terms of health literacy in it being beneficial for us to be able to advocate effectively when it comes to um, issues of policy making or when we want to convey particular um, uh, health issue to, uh, to, to, to policy and to, to, to political leaders. For instance, the, the, the menace we are having um, in, in, in Nigeria, the ongoing uh, menace we are having currently, which is the rape the victim. This is a time for everyone to have that strong literacy about this current issue so that we can help publicize it and it gets to where the appropriate authority, where it needs to get to, and we have um, a public policy on it. So these are the main reasons or the benefits of being literate. So, like I said earlier, um, amongst us present today, we might think we are literate, but unfortunately, if we decide to just throw a survey, we will be shocked at the revelations we will find or we will, we will be able to discover from the few of us that are here today. So it makes me to, you know, throw that question to us or to even ask myself, why and how do people make poor health choices? Kilofa, at the pekini di, tanwe yoman, toja wipe, yon koti o, tu yon nishan fa ni fun wanye, on koto ba tu ma koba wa, la tu ma ma shesi. To ma koba ili arawa ye, o la man she. To some people, it might just be that they do not know more and more. Or some people, they know just little. That is, it could be because of lack of knowledge of a particular health issue. Ah, morara, ah, ni mo ni kwa irara. Okay, wa pri, nko komba in she wa o, a lost hospital, we presented to the hospital and they told us this thing. We don't have the knowledge about it at all. For some people, they have, well, barely little, they have little knowledge about the uh, health situation. And what are these health situations we are talking about? The most common that we see amongst us is cardiovascular diseases. And when we mean cardiovascular diseases, it, it means anything related to our hearts or blood vessels generally. It could be, and the common one is the high blood pressure, which they, uh, they, they call high, we call hypertension. We have the diabetes too. Asthma is there, but might not be common. Well, we have the peptic ulcer, arthritis, tuberculosis, liver diseases, jedo uh, jedo. Uh, we have the kidney disease too, and several others. I just picked on the common ones. Why have I de decided to touch on these common ones is that these conditions that we, we, are, we will be talking about, they are, they, they are what we call chronic conditions. And Kilolo in Boman in chronic conditions. The conditions that they are not just starting in a day. They are things, oh, oh, my, see, if I look at the one, I'm going to go to the next 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 one, to go to the next one, I'm going to go to the next one, I'm going to go to the next so that is the part about chronic diseases. For these chronic diseases, in me, konifuani sign, konifuani go kwa ni ni konisma yis konifuani symptom rara. Until that person comes down with a very major complication, and one example is hypertension. Tamo oleo imboma funi kinipe it is silent killer. For some of these diseases, they run in the families. And for us at this time, and for, for us to really know 
reason, the reason that we have to be to have a, to have this literacy in health is that this is the time for us to look back into our family history. Konika luko para lo si see a family. Let's not find out. Hey, Joe, I saw no one. You know, for instance, tell me about loss of speech today. The doctors will ask you a question. Do you have any family history of hypertension? Do you have any family history of diabetes? Do you have any history of clinical? All those things they are asking. Only reason to move in very. But to us, our careers, very wanted for you. Jerry, come on, would you come and bury? Baulo bury, baulo bury. Can she? Daddy, can she? Can she? Can she? Can she? Can she? Can she? Can we see all this information being asked as irrelevant to us. But sincerely, and we bear it, one 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 bear it. And this is the time for us to take note of it. If we know that Baba Baba means hypertension, or Grandma means hypertension, or Daddy means Mommy means hypertension, or one diabetes, it is a signal to us to take proper care of and what you want to and our our not so that we do not come down with the same situation we are able to guide against or protect our quality of life by not exposing ourselves to risk i won't come to lady can so that is about some people that have in the fact that have family histories of this condition and for some people they develop these conditions because of their health habits or behaviors. As Muslims, alcohol is forbidden in Islam. But there are still some other things, other health risks people do that predisposes them or increases their risk of having these chronic conditions. Our lifestyle. Do we exercise? Do we feed well? Some eat junks, some too much fried food, too much greasy foods. That's unhealthy things that worsens our health situation. And for some people, everything goes. The, the discipline is not there when it comes to their health behavior. I will put a little pause on that issue and I will like to feed us with statistics. Boyataban raw figures of how massive this health situation is. It will help us take a. It will, it, it will help us with our health decision making, and it will guide us to doing things right. Let me start with this. In two thousand and one, chronic diseases that is Boko Haram was approximated to contribute about 60% of 56.5 million total reported deaths globally. I did not say illness. Konshi I saw, and it's 60%, Tabani 60%, which is Ilata, Abibe, no, actually, so, like Ilata, Awati Waku, Nagbaye, chronic diseases, Tan, so, you mean hypertension, diabetes, that's good, bang, that's it, Kaye. And, what why, and it is projected that by 2020, which is, which is where we are at, that this 60% will increase to 75%. So, on decreases, it will worsen. And of this 75% projection, in Toma, Toma relates 71 percent in way is going to be due to heart disease. 75 percent of it will be due to stroke. But while I'm on the stroke, Tabate Moboshe in Kotunfa, at least we can explain what stroke is. Ah, Rock Marose. Ah, Poly Bapapuloma, suddenly you come up with one Baba, Poly Bapapu, and the Bessel, or Mali Soromo. We shall have paralyze you. That is. The explanation we give stroke. But what to the stroke in your bearing ko kilo shell, kilo fa. I won't pop up what is shell attack or BRC that we didn't take note of. And which is for some people that have been hypertensive and they're not doing anything to it. Or they are just careless 
about the management. Once you are diagnosed hypertensive, talking about suffering of way, ah, oh, that way, if you find loss, okay. That is not the time for you to just take things easy. It is the time for you to start monitoring your health like you're monitoring anything. Give it all it takes so that you will live good quality of life. Because once you start having uh, complications, this stroke is setting, the quality of life is gone. You are you become a burden to your family. You are not able to do things, you're not able to function at your peak. So, because we should try to understand the implication of these large figures and use that as a guide to making good decisions in our life, in, in our lives. So I've mentioned earlier that one of the reasons why people make bad health choices is the fact that they might not know more and more to be more and more okay on that particular health issue, on these diseases that we've mentioned. Oh, I want to start to say. But for some people, majorly, we call something behavioral attitude. Behavioral attitude, in Yoruba means the and when you walk down, you walk ah, you have a cosy, you lay a rawa. And when you walk, what are the behavioral attitudes common among people? Some people know, but they are nonchalant. So I can cite the instance of this: tobacco smoking is dangerous to health. They know it is always publicized that it is dangerous to health. Yet they still smoke. They tell you smoking causes cancer, smoking causes this, yet they still smoke. They know, but they are, they are just non challenged. It is an habit. For some people, their behavioral attitude to health is they do not know and they fail to investigate or they probe to or probe further when they tell them things. Okay, you visited the doctor and they told you you have this. Okay, you, ah, eh, any condition you, any hypertension you, have any diabetes you, what is so fun in it? Eh, motele. But get get be, and to yaka, a koto yaka kolini. What we need to learn from this discussion today is that if you do not know, and then you know, this is the time for you to probe deep. You have to know, you have to learn how to know better about what your health situation is all about. So this is the time for you to ask questions. This is the time for you to investigate. What is the implication? How do I manage this condition? The do's and the don'ts. These are the times you need to ask questions. And Kiwan Shekwe, you ask questions and you sit down. You follow up with good habits. That is the health behavior of some people. For some other people, they feel too preoccupied. Ah, Ishekwe o Bukatako. Ishekwe o Bukatako. Ah, Iwani Kutu Wenji. Iwani Ni Kafansha. Iwani Ni everywhere. They feel too that they are well being until tomba crash. And for some people, I want me, he had to walk or see around that is their health uh, sticking behavior. Is shortcuts, and I'll dwell so much on these shortcuts because it will bring me to the issue of self medication and polypharmacy. What do we mean by self medication? This is common among I will bring in a common jamo yawa apologies, but I will definitely talk about it. Maso ah, yala go out to be phone, girly or types ah, yala go down hey, oh mommy go come by, bye, 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 my Lucio, and kill a few pemulelu. Abi Alabadati or Yomoso Jublo Mamma Cotoshi or more. 
So it is this Yalagbaja, because Yalagbaja not in a similar case, the Yalagbaja will prescribe to you. Oh, Lamalu. We might be lucky. Hashi Shefuwa. Angelo. Ah. In fact, Yalagbaja and Cotes of me, oh, she But some people might be unlucky. Only she shall fool. I was Yalagbaja and say, I took Yapa Medo. Ah, Yapa Medo. And Papa, bye, 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 bye. So that vicious cycle continues. You keep getting advice, non medical advice from non medics. And they keep prescribing, they keep prescribing. That is what we call self medication. And for some people, shako peni, ah, inkoba ini wado, okay, jaki inko po mele, ko po mele, ko po mele. So you get pres prescription from several people, and then you dump that in your system. What we do not understand is that as we are doing the self medications of polypharmacy, we are exposing our body system, our organ system, to several unguided chemical insults, unregulated insults. Lang expose arawasi and in the aftermath, it's not going to happen once. It will build up because you use this this time. It's in the system. It builds up. You don't know what harm it has caused to the body. The next time you move again. So it causes gradual damage to the body system to an extent that it might become irredeemable. Another issue is indiscriminate use of herbal medications, concoctions. Agbo. But then the harm that a go will cause to our system is worse off. And what is this? What is the reason for this? The reason is that we cannot draw a line. This is the therapeutic dose. That is, in quantity to mumalo lili to mashianfani farami. And this is the quantity that I will use to my shejamba for me. We cannot draw in a line between the therapeutic and the toxic doses. Aside that, the way our body system responds to chemicals differ. It might not harm you. Why? Because your body might not have been exposed to so much toxic level of chemicals and so your body can still process that chemical or toxins from the herbs or from the agbo but for some people their body system might not be able to handle excess load of the toxins from the agbo you are introducing into the body and so it gradually damages the body system and kiloman damage kulara when it comes to ago, it is the liver. The liver she wa ebi e do she wa ebo bala man kati liver je e do je. The liver helps to remove bogo e yara wa no shisha pa kofunara wo. Kosi kofanto jevi kwe o shisha in isolation kwe aile inda shisha o. Si aile yo ba shisha mo lara mi o bogo e to kwa shisha. It doesn't work that way. The way God has programmed our body, the systems work together. Our brain feeds every part of our body. Upon the heart, ulo shisha kum pump e jesi bogwara. So ti upon that te pari shet ti oba reje pump si liver, ti oba reje pump si kidney, ti oba reje pump si lungs, ti oba reje pump si everywhere. Ebo wala ti shet deniye. Every other part of the body, to so po morgan ti o shisha dada e niye no ma 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 pa ma da shet deni at some point. So this is the reason why we have to be extra careful about what we load into our system so that we don't gradually become, we, we don't gradually build ourselves into a time bomb that can explode anytime. So, um, some might say that it is a time bomb. Some might, we might say some as too extreme. And they lived fine. Yes, they lived fine. But we should all understand that 
the world we have today, the world we are living in today, is quite different from that world that our parents lived years back. In our world today, we have issues with global warming. We have issues with climate change. And genetic and environmental conditions, pollution everywhere, um, generator, by a window, you're a mini one for generator, see, tell me if I exhaust the same. No, so now tell me, in your tongue, if I exhaust the generator, see, Muno Jojuma, can that person live the same life? Only need the same life expectancy as our parents here. Now, yes, but I tell you, I believe in one better way, I tell you, my last year, and you won't know fast. So, I'm going to focus on the camera role, because the kind of exposures, the kind of exposure we have in this, our age and time, makes us high risk to all these chronic conditions. So, I need to to share, I need to be extra careful about how we manage our health and the choices we make. On top of that, we live stressful life condition. So if we put all this together, we're always jumping from one place to another. We hardly have time to rest. So if we put all this together, they all play a negative role in our overall health outcomes. So um, the summary of all everything I've been saying is that when we are in particular health crisis or situation, the best thing for us is seek medical help. Unguided uh, medication, Oman Kobawani, it wrecks more harm on us than the good. I've mentioned it earlier, it might work for us in the immediate, but the long-term effect will be catastrophic. So I can cite instance. Kama Koma Soro, Kama Koma Soro Dano. Let me cite this instance of just give us um, experience. I remember the medical practice. There was this woman that presented to me, Omomwe, Omoye, Ojubia, maybe six or seven year old law. And she, the woman kept complaining of recurrent cough. For more, Omoloni complaint. For like months, listen. So I queried her, ah, Kileti Lufun, hospital will let it be law, Kini wants to shift from. Let me go to the hospital. JB Corney, one look of syrup. When it's a low prescribed cough syrup, I tell you, I got your mind to come on by Wukoni. I smiled. When it's a vertical day law, more Cora said train. That's our town mothers, and what Yawa also town mothers are more for my own year. Or that's if I'm just a train picker. They'll just keep picking antibiotics on the shelf. Or I said training from, but I said no, she said more augmenting. But augmenting, no, she said more. She was just picking several antibiotics. But unfortunately for her, this wouldn't work. I now asked her, but both that in low, she had any changes on it. If I was wrong, the only people on was hospital, throat, throat, and tail to swim, go grant about it, go 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 to low, low to 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 low we ran tests for the child, and something just told me, why not just do chest history and let's, let's uh, query Cox for this child? But the test results, Majadi, TB, Lomoini, tuberculosis. Ishe ni yae kawo mori, ikwe ha, bukba o mala onje jongbe, o mo yotun libi konto o mala onfi, sito o mamu, tojwe, sito o mbate lo sibishe. Can you imagine? Omo you need TB. To your kati cat category, sini manage all this while. And let him feel more if you fall, worry in more. We thank God that the case can still be we could salvage it. How much more scenarios to share the cello me ben yet to ja we pay a milo la law that we could not do anything to. We could not help. So the another scenario that I can paint is, okay, this person, only our parents, so we pay, there is history of, our, let me just say there is history of hypertension in the family. This is the category of person, so we pay, well, I don't know, I don't care to know. The fact that my, there is history of hypertension in the family does not mean I will have it, yes. 
does not mean you have it, but you are at you are in high risk. Uh, uh, yeah, you are at, you are at uh, uh, increased risk of having it. So this person just presented with autoglacoma presents hospital. He presented with a, with a, a paralysis, which we call stroke. But before then, when we probed deep, kilo shele, eighteen I want for wole shakiesi, koto di kweki ni shele. And then he said, ah, the oshu major be meta saying you, omu kon notice kwe, omu ori ron, omu kon, omu shak ori kwe, ojo omu kon ron, be ke yon mak ori, everything was just blackout. Lo omu kon sopan wunye kwe, ah, kilo shele, mi omari ron, mi omari ron, elo mi ani aishi aye ni. Aye, aye pati, aye ni, ah, eh, kilo, kilo le shele, te ye yon kon ma blackout, ti o ni ori ron. So that history was there that this person had transient ischemic attack, which is what we call signs of stroke. It might not happen to everybody, but for some people, these are warning signs of stroke in hypertensive patients. I didn't be this person I presented earlier when this thing happened. Or something. We would have been able to pick this case earlier and managed accordingly. So to mention but a few, we can go on and on and on with examples. But this is just to let us know that these things are real. And we should just not pay lip service to everything. We should be in control. We should be in charge. So this takes us to the next level. When do we spin the table around? When do we learn to resolve? Or when, when do we resolve to making healthier choices? For some people, making healthy choices or uh, health-related uh, choices, it comes naturally. It comes have an issue in them. They don't have an issue with it. This is what they've been, they've been doing with the little knowledge about the, with the little knowledge they have about how to take good care of their health, it comes. But for some other people, their turning points could be life occurrences. And these life occurrences are usually unpleasant. They are unpleasant experiences. To Jacqueline, they experience themselves or they see happen to other people around them, whether friends or relatives. That is when they try to make uh, they, 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 they take a new turn or try to make healthy choices for themselves. And for some people, they can only do this through support from other people to help them transition well. Probably you have um, helpmates that you do things together, you go jogging together, you exercise together, you remind yourself some daily habits and stuff like that. To all of us listening to this presentation, we can say categorically which group we belong to. Are we that person? Toja uh, we will learn from others' mistakes. Are we that person that would decide naturally to take this healthy choice? Uh, LD choices before any calamity strikes us. This is a question for us to answer ourselves. ourselves. So moving on, we've dwelled so much about understanding what health literacy is all about. Well, how can we develop that skill and confidence? How? How do we want to make ourselves strong. We would be able to make that informed decision. We can stand our feet firm and say, mm -mm, this is what I know and this is what I'm dying for. How do we get to that level? One thing I want, to, I want us to understand is that developing that skills and confidence in um, making informed decisions does not totally depend on us because we also need like the reciprocity of our healthcare provider to achieve this. And how can we achieve it? 
is by one, through communication. We need to develop our communication skills. When you visit a doctor and you are told something, you have this, probe deep, ask questions. Don't be too timid. You're paying for it. Ask questions. This is about you. It is not even about you. It is about your family. Two. So ask questions. Okay, you how do I improve my health on it? I don't want to my shit on my worst I don't want to can desist from. What are the future uh, complications that I can have that I can have from this ailment? Endeavor to ask the name of the drugs you are given. When I was practicing in Nigeria, when I give a patient, I tell them the name of the drugs I give them. So that when, when they go elsewhere or when they visit another hospital, they can tell them that oh, but I'm not the patient in my hospital. Oh, my bill is oh, but I'm not the one anymore. They, they wouldn't know. So if that person might have grown resistance, don't go to any chef muko. Oh, we are not want to prescribe for the next place to follow. So let us learn to ask questions. Eh, but you go kill or you go to perform a care for free because it is your responsibility. It is your right to know. You have the right to know. And there is this concept I want to explain to us in public health. There are three concepts. One man saw what we perceive susceptibility. Perceived susceptibility. Can you perceive susceptibility? What, what do we feel? Can I feel nipa risk tally we're exposed to concerning a particular uh, illness? Perhaps if we know the health risk that we have concerning an, an health issue, we will be able to make better choices. For instance, if you are told that, ah, okay, well, vaccinating yourself against um, HPV, uh, human papilloma infection, will prevent you from having cervical cancer. We will rush at getting the vaccine. Okay, getting vaccine for our children against uh, measles or polio will prevent them from having roparose. We will, we, will, we will run to get help for this. And perceived severity. If we have, if we ask questions from a healthcare provider, what, what, what is the severity of this situation? How bad will it be? If we have that information at the back of our mind, it will guide us to make good health choices. Perceived threats, ask questions. If I don't do all these things, or if I do these things concerning my, uh, concerning my health, what, is the, what complication can I have? from it. If we have these three knowledge at the back of our mind, it will guide us to making informed decision and helpful transition to making healthier choices. Another thing is, how do we develop the skills and confidence to be able to make informed decision is transparency. Hello, me, my lost hospital by all my withhold information. Learn to be truthful. But, but you, you don't have to think that doctors or anybody will judge you. Learn to be truthful with what your problem is. Any information to whether be Larry, open up one of poking for a and Thomas, spill it out. If you had any issues in your family, let them know this is what we have running in our family. It is all about you. You don't have to withhold any information from your healthcare provider. And another thing that we can do to develop our skill and confidence is what expanding our knowledge. We have, you use technology, we use phone, we, we are exposed to the internet. This information, and let us learn about them. Let us read about them. Let us know so much about all these health conditions so that we can use this to help ourselves positively. So we mentioned earlier on that what are the reasons or that we need to be health literate is to be able to make informed decisions, to be active partners in our healthcare, if you communicate with your healthcare provider, you are already active partners. You are engaging them. You are helping yourself. You are helping them to help you have a better life. And by so doing, they will guide you and you will know where and who to go to to access this healthcare. So I've been told that I have just five minutes to wrap up, which is good. Um, the only thing I want to touch is 
um, in, I am very sure that the, the, the majority of people I'm speaking with here today are uh, based in Nigeria. And uh, the several platforms that we can access health, I think I've, I've talked about this in person in my discussion. So we have the private healthcare providers. This might be quite expensive for some people. And some people we, we, we can have this bias about um, going to private health um, care providers because uh, it might be expensive. They just keep uh, collecting money. They just keep doing back and forth. They just keep going, 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 going. And then you, you really don't uh, get any sense out of it. Public health facilities are there. The primary health centers, general hospitals, teaching, teaching hospitals. They are open to us to present our cases. Charity organizations are there. If you see if there's any community health outreach, please feel free to explore that opportunity. The internet is there. Social media platforms are there for us. There are so many platforms that we can learn so many things about our health on. Telehealth is there, which is just um, coming up in Nigeria now. You can, you can uh, use the find the med, the Kankwe, uh, the key link uh, pl platforms to ask questions related to your health. Some are free, some come with token. The mobile app devices are there for you to make use of, to make use of. So to wrap up, the key tips to, maintain, to maintaining healthier life is to invest in our health. And what do I mean by investing in our health? If you've been diagnosed with a particular disease, please, Try to be on top of it. If it is hypertension, it doesn't cost you anything to get a speak. That digital device that you can use to measure your blood pressure yourself at home. You can be doing that every day. Monitor the trend, write it down somewhere. That way, if anything goes wrong, if you see anything unusual, you can pick it on time and you can radio your doctor. This is what I observe. And they will know what to do. So another thing is, let us refrain from unhealthy habits. Let us exercise. Those of us that use the cars regularly, if it is 30 minutes, let us try to create that balance. 30 minutes walk every day is good to keep us healthy. And then we've talked about eating habits, exercise, um, intermittent fasting has also been recommended. Islam has recommended it for us. And science has also proven um, that intermittent fasting is very beneficial to health. Like it helps to promote uh, blood sugar, weight loss. It um, slows down uh, cancer uh, progression, boosts brain function, delay aging, and all other benefits that we can uh, get from um, uh, fasting. And lastly, to some of us, our perception about our health is that I'm 100% okay. For us, this category of people, I believe that it is good to know that or to feel that you're 100% okay. But an annual screening is not a bad idea for us. Let us also try to be on top of our health. Let us try to check ourselves six monthly or annually. We never can tell what routine screening can spring up for us in terms of our health. Um, I'm not sure if I have uh, more time, but um, I hope that one way or the other, we've picked some lessons from this discussion today. We need to increase our skills and confidence when it, terms, when it comes to being literate and making informed decisions about our health. And we need to make that decision right now so that we do not contribute to the rising statistics of chronic diseases worldwide. Jazakum Jazakilaw Khairan. Why ya come Jazakilaw and Jazali Awalim. Uh, we say a very big thank you to our doctor. May Allah continue to enrich you with um, better knowledge and beneficial knowledge, inshallah. Uh, we say a very big thank you to you. Uh, inshallah, I'm sure the issue of health um, requires a lot of questions. I have, I have no doubt about that. And um, I already have three questions here with me. Uh, let me start with one from um, Dr. G, uh, inshallah. Um, he says, um, thank you, Dr. Rahima, for the session. Um, could you please speak to the issue of, nash, of nutritional therapy from people who are not trained dietitians and without any guidance from a medical doctor 
that a food type aligns well with our existing body conditions. So yeah. he, he wants you to talk about that. That's the first question. So you can go ahead and answer that while I get other questions. Okay. So um, thank you very much for asking that question. It's so pathetic, the kind of society we find ourselves. And, you know, our people, because we are, um, I would say we are blinded to certain things. And it also boils down to the fact that we are not literate enough to understand that um, these services might not be beneficial to us. For me, I expect that I've been uh, leaving this discussion today with what the little um, thing we might be able to pick away from this. This is the time for us. Like I said earlier, let us always learn to question. If you patronize anyone that offers you any nutritional therapy, I think it is not out of place for you to ask, are you a dietitian? Are you licensed to practice this? We need to be able to know who and where to turn to for help. Sincerely, it's, um, it's just so pathetic that um, we, we, the Nigerian society is just, um, the, the Nigerian healthcare system is so messed up that everyone we just, every time Dick and Harry comes in with everything they have, Everybody just uh, throws everything they have. They, they, anybody can just sit at the corners of their houses, houses, cook up something and throw it to the public. And because the public are vulnerable, well, they really don't have a better idea of how best to manage their health. They, they fall victim of all this. If we have good regulatory agencies in place, I think this is, this is where they come in individuals patronizing them they are they are, they are vulnerable they are they are not to be blamed but the blame lies majorly on the society the the country we have how best are they regulating people's excesses so the question as much as it affects us individuals and where it affects the individuals is let us learn. Let us learn to know more about us. And let us learn to know where to draw the line. Before you can decide to opt for something, I think it is not out of place for you to get second opinion. Ask from your doctor. Okay, fine. This is what you've told me to do. But I feel I want to use this. Do you think this is recommended? This is advisable. Can you recommend this to me? Your healthcare provider should be in the best position to give you that advice that, well, well, you can do this. Okay, I am, this is my field. I will recommend you, I will recommend you a dietitian that can guide your, your, your choice of nutrition. At this point, we need to take charge of our health. We need to be in control. And we need to be informed, not informed, but being well informed. Doctor, do you say, yes, to an extent, but do you say that um, nutrition is very, very important in maintaining our health? Um, it is. It is very important. Okay. So you, you're advising that um, every one of us should make sure that. Um, Either we'll visit a dietitian to guide us on what and what we should be eating and how do we feed our family? Well, I feel that is too to the extreme. If you don't have a particular health situation, for instance, if you're not diagnosed diabetic, well, if you feel you have the money, you want to visit a dietitian to, to give you a guide to, oh, this is what I'm supposed to eat, this is what not I'm supposed to eat, it's fine. But I think that um, aligns well to those that have pre-existing health condition. You want to be sure about what to take that will not worsen your health risk. But for the majority of us, like I said, you have this perception that you are 100% good with your health. Then it is always right for you to strike a balance in what you eat. Less of junks, 
less of greasy foods, more vegetables, balance with proteins, vitamins, and that's it, less of salt, sugar, uh, sweetened beverages. We all know this, all this information are there online for us. I don't think we need a dietitian to help us. You know that. That. Uh, but, but also one thing about um, our people here is they, they can, they, some of the people that claim to be dietitian will also tell us that um, kids, you, there, are, there are some certain kind of food you must not give to your child. Don't give them milk, don't give them egg, don't give them all those things. No, best for our children, while they are growing up, they are forming up. What are the best things that we can, we can give okay. them? Okay, so uh, when it comes to children, children have um, certain stages of growth in their lives. So we, let me start with the first five years of their life. So this is the time that we expect um, a great brain, de a massive brain, a brain development. And at this stage, they need more of proteins. They need more of vitamins. It's not that you will not give them calories, but at least you will try as much as possible to limit the junks they eat. Children need protein. And it's very well recommended that they eat at least one egg a day. Let them take fruits. Let them eat nuts. But try as much as possible to break it down so that it will not be one that can choke them, they can put into the nose and that, that can choke them. They can eat what we eat, but it has to be balanced. We all know what balance is. But somehow, the, the economic situation might not, um, uh, oh. you know, we, we might not be able to afford what we really want for our children. But we can still do, we can still work within our, 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 our reach. We don't know, it doesn't have to be too, we don't have to go overboard to make yeah. sure that our children get what they are supposed to get. One leg a day is okay for them. Okay. Um, they, can, um, they, can take, they can take milk. Milk. Yes, okay. they can take as much, as much milk as they can. If, if they let them have it, yes. Limit yeah. you know, processed foods. Processed foods should be limited for them. No. Noodles, uh, pasta, they, can, they should take more of whole grains. No. More of whole grains. Rice, legumes, beans, fish, no. proteins, crayfish, meats. These are good for them. Okay. But when it comes to the adults, yeah. then we take away all these things. Red meats, you would bring it down. Take more of lean meats, white meats, less of protein. I mean, less of milk. If it has to be milk, if you have to take milk as an adult, it might be skimmed milk with reduced fat content. We have zero percent, one percent milk. Yes, yes, yes. Now, thank you very so much, Madam Idris Kende. Your question, please. You only have one minute. I have about six questions already waiting. Now, I want to have a two. Yeah, the question I need to ask is this: I want a uh, doctor to help me do an analysis. How can we be able to, what type of test should we be able to do in case someone is having an, an, an allergy? Because I, I have a case that I've reported to Dr. Sefrali, but they couldn't come out to tell me this is what is really causing this allergy. The other thing they give to me is to use Beratadine to suppress. Not until finally I was able to now trace something because it's something happens to one of my nephew. And I said, okay, if this person is having this, is it likely I will have it? For about five years, I've been having the issue until recently, this COVID period that I discovered taking vegetable oil is part of what is causing the allergy. My question is, what kind of test can we do to tell us the type of food we will not be eating? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that brought out a smile. A smile. Me. Okay. Um. Let me try to uh, correct or disabuse yourself concerning that. There is no test for you. There we, we do not have that pre pre prescribed test to actually sort out the kinds of food you can eat. But we can run tests to find out whether you are having allergic reaction or not. When they do, they collect your blood and they do blood work up for you. They are looking for something in your blood. If there is any form of allergy, some parameters are triggered. Some parameters are high. So that gives us an idea that, oh, something is amiss. It's an allergy or something or an infection or something. 
So this kind of um, scenario you painted was something I was discussing with um, someone, I think yesterday, that when you have uh, um, issues, like you have skin reactions or anything, the best bet for you to do, if you visited um, hospitals or uh, um, doctors, is that you need to see a specialist. Ask, request to be referred to a specialist. See a dermatologist if it's anything allergic reaction. And once you see them, they'll be able to advise. That's where questions come in. Like you rightly said, the, the best thing they would have asked was for you to take note of triggers. There are some food, some people react to cream, some people react to uh, soap, so a bath soap. Some people, the sight of cockroach alone triggers reactions in them. Some people are allergic to um, some people are for the asthmatics, you know, um, dust mites or anything, anything just triggers sensitive reactions in the mind. These are the things you need to identify. No doctor will be able to pick out these things for you. You own your body. This happens to you. It is you that will be able to figure out that ah, at this particular time, these are the things I have done. These are some activities that I think, these are the things I feel might have triggered this thing. You try to withdraw them for some time and see if that uh, reaction still persists or allergy still persists. So concerning food allergies, it is on you to be able to figure out that food. So we try to tell people, if you think you're having food allergies, do not um, try to give some gap to whatever you take. Like you eat the food now, you should be able to, you know, like give some room before you take something different. So that if anything happens in between um, that, uh, that time frame, you'll be able to picture, you'll be able to say precisely, oh, I guess it was when I took this particular food that I had this trigger. But when you take too many things at the same time, it will be difficult for you to particularly point at uh, the, the trigger. I hope that answers the question. Hello? Hello. Are we still there? Yeah, I'm very sorry, doctor. Um, my <laughs> network just went off. I'm so sorry. So I'm back now. Um, unfortunately, um, I think I lost some of those questions, but I can remember some few of them. Someone asked, um, what is the best solution for muzzle pool? What is the best solution for muzzle pool? That's one of the questions from Asuyut. I can remember that. Okay. Um, Dr. Amira, I'm sorry, can you please? Okay, so um, let me answer that um, question on uh, muzzle pool. Hello? So concerning muzzle pool, the explanation between muzzle pool is that you have spasm in that area that you feel pain. And what is the reason for that spasm you are having? is that that particular area is oxygen deprived. So if those muscles are oxygen deprived, you know, we all need oxygen to breathe. If those parts are oxygen deprived, they go into spasm. And all you need to do, it will take time for them to relax. It's not something, it's, it's not life threatening. For some people, they try to massage because once the, the muscles contract, they contract, the blood circulation too, is kind of impaired. So what you can do is just to put some kind of, um, you massage through it and with time, the pain will ease. So it's not, um, it's uh, not something that's terrible. It happens maybe when you exercise and when you engage in rigorous exercise and that part of the body is deprived of oxygen. Does that answer your question?
I think we lost we lost the moderator again. Preventive measures to okay. Hello. I think the moderator is gone again. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll take it up from here. Um, there are some questions. Um, my question is, on the aspect of medical mismanagement, what options are open to individuals who suspect they or their family members are not getting adequate treatment for a particular hospital or doctor? Advice on what to do, please. It's very clear you think you are not getting what you the right services move to somewhere else move to somewhere else that is why we have um different facilities available you have the private settings you have the public settings the private primary health uh, health uh, care centers you have the general hospitals you have the teaching hospitals if you feel you are not getting value for the the for, for the money you're paying move to someone else make this known to whoever you've seen that this is what um this is what has been done this is what we've been managed for and i feel we are not getting any improvements with that whoever that you're presenting to next already knows your uh, complaints he already knows why you are dissatisfied and i guess this person will always want to do things right so that he doesn't want he doesn't you, you will not count him or her as part of the mismanagement team another question Okay, um, what do you say about using home remedies? For example, lemon, ginger, to manage an already diagnosed disease. Mm. It's expensive to visit doctors regularly. Hello, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear your question, yes. Hello? Yes, I can, I okay, hear Okay, yeah, you said it's expensive to visit doctors. Okay, it's expensive to visit doctors regularly. Also, kindly advice about kids who are picky eaters, refuse to eat vegetables and fruits, which are okay. essential to the body. Okay, so let me um, take the first question. Like, what do you do? Um, I'm sorry. Can you help me with the first question again? Yeah, hello? I think using home remedies like ginger. Yeah, home, rem um, home remedies hello? for diagnosis. Yes. yes, I want to pick that part. For diagnosis, yes. disease. I have an issue with that. For diagnosis. Yes, I have an issue with that. You have some diagnosis that you have maybe um, ha a heart condition or you have a kidney impairment or you have a liver impairment and you feel using this ginger, garlic or all these things will help you. You are just worsening your situation or taking a go will help you because it is expensive to manage your health condition. You are, you are, you are, you are doing yourself a disservice. So my question to you is that if you want to go through this shortcut to manage yourself when the complications come wouldn't you spend more money than you would have spent originally to take care of yourself in the first place i said it earlier we need to learn to invest in ourselves oh what tell me my fera shoto my fera bata oh what tell me my fi told you arai ko to what my fera shoto my fera bata to my fera iphone iphone this is the time we need to call a spade a spade. We need to learn to forgo luxuries of life and take good care of ourselves. Our health is like an amono on us. It's like a trust on us. And if we feel that is not the situation, we should consider if we are uh, uh, like, um, if, like a father or mother figure in the family, like you are, you are, you are a household representative of your family. 
then you should try as much as possible to consider those people you are responsible for if your health does not make meaning to you. I'm not saying using ginger, all these natural remedies are not good. But when it comes to using all these natural remedies, you are only using these natural remedies in subtle quantities, in little quantities to help boost your immunity, to suppress inflammation, because that is what they do. They help to boost your immunity, to, to, to fight subtle uh, conditions. For instance, you're having a flu, any uh, only cold, only kata, or this COVID-19 uh, stuff that people have been saying. It is not this ginger or this garlic or all this herbal or whatever remedy that you use that will cure it. What the thing just does is that it helps to reduce inflammation. What inflammation does is when you have uh, a foreign organism coming into your body, you have invasion of your body. It triggers some reactions in the body, which is what we, what we call inflammation. And with this inflammation, you are, it's, it's like you have a multiplication of all those diseases and some, some triggers. With inflammation, you can have fever, you can have body aches, you can have all sorts. That is the, the way it might present itself. But several other things may be ongoing in the body. But what all these natural remedies does is to what? Suppress that inflammation. It doesn't ward off that infection. It only suppresses it. And once your body is able to, uh, once that uh, med, uh, your heart natural remedy, the inflammation is suppressed, your immunity is boosted, and your own body defense mechanism, your white blood cells, your everything that you might have will fight all these things. It is not what you are eating, what that drug or um, your ginger or your garlic that is doing the work for you. It is only trying to boost your immunity to help your body fight that infection. I hope that answers your question. So what I will advise that person is, Alafia, Loshe Koko, your health is wealth. Seek necessary attention early enough at the early stage of a diagnosis. It is not advisable to wait till later stage when so many things will have gone wrong before you seek help. At that time, you will spend more to take care of yourself and your quality of life will never be the same compared to if it had been arrested at the earlier stage. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, the question about picky eaters, the yeah. babies so are picky, children are. So for picky eaters, Masha Graf and Woyawa, Olon Asubo Maabawa, Kenyi, Koni Suwa, Koni Rewa, and a victim of a child that is also picky. It was so frustrating when I was nursing my last um, child, my last daughter. So frustrating. She would try this. I'll, I'll, I'll try this for her this week. She try it. She eats it for two days and then she refuses it. I'll have to try something else. Ah, Nijeko Suwa. So we just keep trying several, several things. So for fruits and vegetables, what I do, even the grown-ups that I have with me, my kids don't take vegetables on Jeffo. But what I do is they like okra. They like a wedu. So in that okra, I blend therefore, I blend it with the okra so that the leafy uh, vegetable does not look too coarse or does not look too visible in what they are eating. That way, they are already eating the vegetable. If you are frying egg, the mama die and you want the egg. Dice, therefore, a fonye, a geko, whether the washman gil gulaja, a shape of a shred, and you know, you can mix it with the egg and fry it with it. Oh, my dear, I said, for a legacy for money, and they are eating vegetable. If they are the type that don't take fruit, mom, you got now, they take you got. You have blenders at home, blend the fruit. Make it into smoothie for them. Put it inside the yogurt. They might not be able to take uh, the, the, the fruits when blended because of um, the, the coarse nature of the, 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 uh, the, the fleshy parts. But when you blend it into smooth, you can just mix it into the yogurt for them. And it doesn't seem visible. We should learn to be creative as mothers. We should learn to be innovative. Try several things. All these things, all these things are on YouTube video. Let that, that be what we'll sacrifice our data on for our kids, 
especially for picky eater children. I hope that answers the question. Yes, I, 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 I hope they can't hear you, Shia. <laughs> Your kid is... Um, let's take part of people raising up their hands. Okay. Um, we are causing Bakari and Ajaka fire. Yeah, so I'm going to come to the back of My question is, uh, if a child does not eat fruit, there is no fruit you give her, she will never eat it. As long as she knows this is a fruit, she will never eat it. What do you advise? How old is the child? Eight. Eight. <laughs> the child would never take any fruits. Yeah. And you've tried everything to persuade and the child is not taking. Not even yeah. the varieties of fruit. So perhaps she's not just interested in one particular fruit. Not all kinds of fruits. I can say 99% of fruit. Even when you try to force her, she would vomit it at the end of the day. Eba you egba si afa gidi gba ade wa bi dan. Well, she try lati she say no smoothie for. No. Like like blending you got just to change the taste. Ah, mommy, what to do? We say okay. I I know some people when they eat bread and egg, they vomit. They have to take beverage, or they have to take something just to you know change the the taste of whatever they might have eaten. So for that kind of child, you really need to figure out what works best for, for that child. Eight year old is a balagba to me. But you can make it into smoothie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, for the daughter for general, and you know, be creative. Make it into ice cream. Ice cream, no matter what, All right. Aja Kefaya. Hey, look at you. You can't promise yourself. Um. Hello, can you hear me? I just, you have the floor. We can hear you. You have the floor. Um, my question is, um, if a baby is um, if a baby is allergic to milk, doesn't like to take anything that has milk in it, what can you suggest? What percentage can you suggest for the hospital? The baby okay. is about two years, two years now. Okay, if I get your question right, the question is if a baby is allergic to milk, what other options can the baby take? Right? Yes, yes. What other okay. yes, allergic to cow milk, yes, yes. I think it's allergic to cow milk. Okay. Is there any other type of milk or is there any other yeah, is that the Okay, that is that is a clear case of lactose intolerance. And if we have situations like that, options what? Probably the, uh, the child is allergic to the casein in the milk. So we can do all plant options. Uh, soy milk, you can try soy milk. You can try uh, tiger nut milk. You can try um, almond milk. I'm not sure if it is something you can get readily in all our shops. So these are, you can try, if, if the child is allergic to cow based milk, you can try plants. Uh, plant-based milk, which will still serve the same purpose. It's the protein content that we need, and the, the fat as well, but more of protein. You can, you can try plant-based uh, milk options. I hope that answers the question. We, um, doctor, we have um, Imam Yahya in the house. He wants to contribute. Okay. Imam Yahya. So Imam, uh, inshallah, you have the floor. You can unmute yourself. Imam, you can unmute yourself. Hello? I'm going, Imam. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm going. 
Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Nisi uh, Yap, uh, Dr. Yap guy. That's how I call it. I ask Allah to Allah to assist in the knowledge of us and keep on increasing in the knowledge of us. Uh, my little contribution, I joined very late, but I've been now, in fact, I'm not using my phone. Um, on this issue of our health, which is a partner of the vision, a partner responsibility. And there are certain things that the prophet has taught us in the way of life that are not sure to, in some of our personal aging that most of us don't take it as anything. And it's very important in our life. The simple, the simplest part of it is cutting of our fingernails. Hello? No, someone listen. I'm going, Mom. I'm going. The cutting of our fingernails. As our doctors have told us, I will, even right from primary school, we, we lead to elementary science in thought that our fingernails have us death, uh, which is nothing but bacteria and germs. So most of our brothers and sisters today, they keep fingernails. And when you keep fingernails, you know, you can see a token, so you can show up. I'm a big young, and as a result, we'll be eating something that's not pleasant, that's something that is harmful to, to his personal health. Another thing is the shaving of the arm pigs and the pubic region. Likewise, the prophet has taught us that we should eat as divide our stomach into three parts. One for food, another one for water, and the rest for good living. That and, and I, there's a part of the that says that Kulu washirabu wala that eat and drink and do not go into excess, that we should not be wasteful and we don't that means that we should not eat too much. Because we have been told that when you eat too much, the the, the food will just decay in, 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 in the stomach and it will not have no benefit. So most of our brothers today, they are having big tummy. So we need to speak in that direction also that people should go to, to go and gym and burn fat. We, we should not be keeping fat because it's not that good for our health. Excess is not good for our health. So the personal hygiene is something we should have to keep very serious. Even the washing of our hands during the um, act of ablution. Muslim doctors, those who are into prophetic medicine, they have told us that the knuckles of our fingers keep just like a solid habit of dust that play us to germs and bacteria. So as a result, we take note of washing, washing our hands from time to time so that we can be in a good state of health. And the prophet said that one thing, and an analysis of the prophet said that that is a strong and healthy believer is more beloved and dearer to Allah than a weak and unhealthy one. But there are goodness in two of them. Meaning that if you are not good in one way, you be good in other in another. But the most important part of the decision of that is that we should take charge of our health. And lastly, Ma, I want you to let our people know one thing. Well, because somebody said that, the uh, first question asked by Allah Chijibu, that can we patronize people who call them the patients uh, or nutritionists who are not planting? You have answered it. But um, the problem we in the professional medicine line we are having is that people who have seen medical doctors as alpha and omega in the field of health sector. And some doctors, oh, uh, let me say most doctors, not like you, like you, and some of our brothers, and even doctors who are not uh, academicians, who are aware of professional medicine. Some are not aware of, so even they are Muslim. I've seen a doctor, a, a pediatrician that condemns it and says, you know, there's nothing like a professional medicine. It is just mere food supplement. But what I think what we need to be telling our people, particularly you doctors, is that if you want to patronize anybody, just make sure you are patronizing a licensed and professional body for somebody in the river. Because this issue of health, it, 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 no one has monopoly to teach. What you have been told is that when it comes to emergency, it, becomes, it belongs to uh, confessional medicine. We cannot switch away in the professional medicine. We cannot set lines. We cannot do certain, certain things. We cannot do a lot of things we cannot do. But there are a great number of things that we can do on our life that's not for your field. Which I know you, you know, and some of our, some of our doctors like you. So what I'm 
sometimes we drive at that our people need to make sure you know that there are other ways to help skills, different from conventional medicine. But if you want to consult anybody, make sure you do not consult a quack, consult a professional, a licensed for somebody, somebody who is a professional in that field that keep on reading from time to time. Even in the United States of America, do your page now. So people like that in their own field are people what people should consult, they should not just consult somebody selling a ball around. I'm not saying a ball is not good. And I'm not saying that Aguma is not right, but the way the national medicine is sending to us today, yeah, it may be in the next five years, in Nigeria, people, people are getting the, I mean, the, uh, the free cost and the investment. Currently, they do it in last year. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, FC is in the uh, diploma program here, which I'm running with a few months currently. So, I uh, pray to Allah. To unite our heart in this field of uh, medicine. You are not almost a professional. I mean, Jazakumullah, Doctor uh, Imam, I should go. Um, now, nah, Inshallah, Doctor, I don't know if you've answered this question. Doctor, are you still there? No, yes. Okay, I don't know if you've answered this question about keto, keto diet earlier. So, what's the question about? Okay, so um, there is someone that is asking about, let me pull up the question again. Um, the person says, um, thanks doctor for this session. May Allah reward you abundantly. Are you aware of keto diets? If yes, is it recommended for a PB, PB patient considering the fact that it allows for egg consumption? Keto is K-E-T-O. I don't know if yeah, you are. Yeah, aware I know keto. Yes, I know keto. But what else? Okay, I, I, okay. That acronym PB is it BP or PB? I want that full clarification of that acronym. Okay, um, Eagle Eye, please, if you can, please resend this question or answer what doctor is trying to query. No, I just you can just um notify the uh, the acronym. What does PB mean? Exactly. What is the meaning of PB? PB, please, if you can, please tell us. Very important. Probably it meant to switch the stuff around like BP or something else. I also want to ask um, the issue of HMOs. How do you think um, can work for us as, as a community in the academy? Okay, so BP, BP, it means blood okay, pressure. Blood pressure. No. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So for that kind of uh, question, blood pressure. Okay. So when it comes to managing blood pressure of uh, hypertensive patients, we do advise for the stats, depending on the diagnosis that is because hypertension is divided into stages. You have uh, the pre-hypertension. It has this value that's maybe greater than 120 because now before we know that hypertension which is when you have greater than 120 or 130 over 90 or thereabouts. But now the value is getting much lower. Pre-hypertension starts with some, something greater than 120 now. And then you have the mild hypertension, the moderate, the severe, and then the moribund. So before we get to this level, if it is just pre-hypertension, they can still, uh, with, there's something we call DASH, dietary advice. So what we do is, first, we try to encourage that person with lifestyle modification. They will tell you, okay, well, reduce your salt intake, um, exercise more, reduce your uh, fat intake, uh, like make it, uh, if you're smoking, try to cut it off or reduce, or if it's alcohol, reduce all those um, uh, high, risk, uh, high risk factors, and then try to exercise more, maintain a healthy life balance along with your nutrition. So when we talk about eating egg, like keto diet, for me, the keto, I don't know, we might have um, different opinions about keto. I know of some people that they want to shed weight, they want to lose weight, and then they say that they're on keto diet, and it's not working for them. So it all, I think it's dependent on individual body systems, or probably how compliant that person is with whatever they are taking, how well you measure the proportion of whatever you take. So it is relative. So recommending eggs as part of keto diet for someone that has a, a high blood pressure, it depends on 
the stage at which that person is in the diagnosis. Egg is not bad. You can't take egg. But what is often advised is if you're trying to reduce the cholesterol for this patient, then the yolk in the egg is not advised. You take the yolk out. You can eat the egg whites, but you take the yolk out. The yolk out. I'm, I'm not so, um, I'm, I know about keto, but what it entails is what I do not know. And the proportion or the ration of, I mean, the combination of foods you take is what I am not proficient in. So for whoever that is going in line with keto diets, you might want to talk with your dietitian. And I'm very sure that if a dietitian should recommend keto for you as a means of managing your blood pressure, then you are working with a professional, a specialist in that field, and they feel that is right for you. If they allow you eat egg, then perhaps they might have cut down on other food that you might take that can balance up with the egg you are eating. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, so finally, is the question of HMO, which I asked, and that will be the final question, inshallah. Um, what's your recommendation for HMO for a community like the academy? What do you think? Do you think it's the right direction for us? Do you think, uh, is it advisable that people should please go ahead and do, no matter how small, for their health management? Yes. So, um, first off, what is health maintenance, um, HMO or health maintenance organizations generally? There are one core, one core that, that there are, we have several of them. They are a body, but we have so many providers, health providers under these organizations. So what does HMO entail for everyone? I'm, I'm sure the majority of us who know what HMO is all about. It's like this organization, they you pay premiums to them like monthly or annual. It's like a subscription you pay to them. And what this means is that you are free to walk in into any healthcare provider to access health. And the benefit of this is uh, such that you might not be able to pay out of pocket. But if you are under a particular HMO, at some critical point in your life, when you are not able to afford out-of-pocket payment for your healthcare needs, being, having an health insurance under an HMO covers you. You can walk in and get the necessary care without fear that, ah, you can get the drugs and everything. But the limitation of the challenge with HMO is that it has the network coverage. You cannot just walk up to any hospital and get care. You have to be covered. Your, the hospital you are using has to be covered under that uh, network. And another limitation is that it depends on your plan or your insurance uh, subscription or whatever you might have. <laughs> Exactly. Be over what you are buying. Some the subscription you are to No, the service thing you are getting is to You cannot expect that you are under an HMO and you are paying so a certain subscription. And then when surgical emergencies come up, you expect that the the uh, the 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 HMO will cover HMO all expenses. Cover it. it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It doesn't happen automatic like that. You are going to pay some part. They will cover some part, and you pay the difference. That is the way it works. So for some people, they are employee covered. They are whatever uh, organization they work for, they put them automatically on HMOs. They choose maybe hospitals proximal to whether, where, wherever they live or they, it's your choice. You can de decide. Maybe based on ratings of hospital or competence of doctors that you feel um, manage the setting. You can decide where you want to enroll. But I think it is the way to go. Because Obama shall by young that me. And as uh, it's always good to save for the rainy day. It's good to save. 
but sometimes you might find yourself in certain situations that even to procure some drugs for your child might be difficult. Or um, run, rush into a pharmacy at some um, particular days of the week might be difficult. When I was in Nigeria, pharmacies don't open on Sundays. And for some mothers that do self-medication and everything, they want to cook sorry, lossy pharmacy, let's go get one or two things. Let me start with maybe the 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 most common, maybe antipyretics, um paracetamol, taman lo pan one more. Just to 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 mention a very uh, subtle example. So what man shag by young by me, but if you are under the coverage of health organization, they will still provide you with the basic care that you need, which is just prevention. They just provide you with pre uh, preventive care. But when it comes to major health issues, we have to be prepared. And this is where NHS is another, NHIS, in NHIS is another platform like this. This one is federal government uh, system run stuff, but I really can't say so much about how the NHIS is operationalized. I thought um, ES would be here to to talk more on this because I will, um, according to the 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 content of my presentation, I was made to understand that he was going to take this part. So, what we can do as a body, as a Muslim community, is that I think it is high time that we try to get involved in the health of our people. We should try to invest in the health of our people by probably um, we can have partnership with some of our private hospitals that we know some of our doctors run or even if our doctors don't run it we can just walk up to some big hospitals in Lagos or strategic places and tell them we want to have a stake in your hospital as uh, the academy is as a body we want to have a stake in your hospital. What does it take? This is what we can, this is, uh, the, this is what we can afford. And then, you know, they, they know how they, they run these things. And we can advise our members. Okay, well, this is what we can cover for you as a community, as a Muslim community. If you present so, 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 so this is the limits of the coverage you can have. So that whoever that is presenting at least will be prepared to cover the differences. Yet they will have gotten some care when they are in need. But my fear is our uh, people abuse opportunities. And this is really what we need to address if we are going to invest in this for us as Muslims and as a community. Allah. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, inshallah. Uh, just like our doctor has mentioned, unfortunately, the ES is not online at the moment. Um, I think it's attending to some more pressing um, things. But inshallah, um, academy, uh, the leadership of academy, of course, has um, raised um, the alert level on healthcare system in academy to an emergency level. So at, the, at, the, at this point, um, healthcare system is already uh, in a state of emergency at the academy. Oh, I think CJ is on, inshallah, as I can see him now. Okay, so yes, uh, let, me, let me try and um, I'll see my I just came up now. Um, okay, okay. So, yes, um, I think you can, yes, yes, you can talk now. Yes, please, you have the floor, you have the floor, sir. Okay. Um, yes, you have the floor. Oh, salam alaikum wa alaikum salam. Thanks so much, doctor, and uh, all the participants. Uh, may Allah reward us all. So, um, the, there are lots of effort we are actually trying to put in place for the um, HMO plan. Um, but one thing that we see that all is working, um, most of those we are talking to is that they want to know what's the pool count. You know, this thing is usually based on numbers. What exactly, how, 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 many, how many people are, do you have that want to be part of it? So that don't try to talk of rebate and some other things like that. Oh, no, no. 
I, I think we just lost the ES again. Uh, is okay. Okay, he's still here. He's still here. I've seen him again. Um, hello, salam alaikum. Um, okay, hello. We can hear you now. Alaikum salam. Okay, so because of time, Shah, let me quickly just say this. Uh, we are trying to make another inroad, discussing with HMO partners about how um, we can have arrangements with them. Um, we are even uh, trying to go as far as um, based on what they, what they give to us as a cost implication. We may actually, we are also trying to consider um, even doing a free one for the first year for our people, such that after the first year, Renewa can actually uh, continue on their own bill because we realized that the other time we came with it, a lot of people are is having that problem of ah, I don't want to pay for this thing, I don't want to pay for this thing. So this is actually saying that okay, even if it has to go to the extent of making it free for the first year for people, considering that is if we see the price they are giving us and the amount of those that really show interest, we are going to the extent of even making it to be free so that when people enjoy it for one year, after that one year. They can now say, okay, well, they want to do the new one. So that is the extent we are even trying to go, to even go as far as dipping out into the post um, of the academy to pay for a free one year, first year um, health uh, insurance benefit to us. But for those that do have, um, we are trying to encourage everybody to make sure that they really have something that they can rely on and they will make the best use out of it. Hello? We can hear you. You're back. You're back. We can hear you. Okay. I don't know. Where did you hear me? I mean, it's like this thing was muting uh, for suddenly. I was thinking you were the one muting yourself. Hey, it may be you. Oh, sorry, because I'm, I'm joining too uh -huh. far. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so uh, have I been clear enough about um, the plan we are even trying to go to the extent of making it uh, free for those that show interest free for the for first one year. Uh -huh. So we also wow. considering several other options, and that is a mandatory, um, what we call a check, um, a medical checkup for people of certain age among us. We are yet to finalize that. Um, we had a robust discussion on this yesterday in the council meeting, that when people get to a particular age in academy, we'll make it mandatory for them, um, maybe with a partnership with a particular um, testing center that, okay, we'll do a comprehensive health uh, um, a check, medical check so that we can easily know. Because one thing we discover is that uh, not uh, having latent illness, it was due to snowball to bigger complications in the, in life later on. A lot of people move around, they don't actually know what exactly is it that is in their system. And apparently, they couldn't pay attention to the do's and don'ts of that element. So some people, ideally for what they have, they have some special care or some do's and don'ts that they should be taking so much cognizance of. But a lot of people don't really understand that. So uh, our own view is that when people go to do medical checkup, they are said what exactly is happening in them, either the manifest and the latent one, a lot of things can easily be taken care of before it escalates to medical emergency among us. So that's the other option we are trying to look at. Inshallah, when the discussion matures, we're going to uh, unveil it completely. But suffice to say is the fact that anything medicals now is going to take so much attention among us. In fact, this series of health talk we're listening to today, we're still going to listen to another one, inshallah, in subsequent weeks. So we're going to rotate and do lots and lots of talking about our health issues coming with different perspectives. May Allah reward each and every one of us and grant us sound health, uh, long life and prosperity uh, to be able to carry on with the work of Allah. Amen. Now, um, on this note, I think we've come to the end of today's session, inshallah. I uh, will say Jazakumullah Khairan to the ES and our doctor for the opportunity. May Allah continue to restore our health and maintain our health for us, as much as we are also taking responsibility of our health and our family. I uh, will say Jazakumullah Khairan, Khairan Jazai, Kamal Jazai, Awalin.
I will end this session by uh, reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddi. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasti'in. Ihdina Surah Al-Mustaqim. Surah Al-Ladhina An'amta Alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون السلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Uh, one thing before we go, doctor, um, are we allowed to? Can people reach out to you if they have um? Personal consultation, maybe via email or something. Is it possible? Sure, inshallah. Okay, please. Um, for anybody that needs our email address for personal consultation, I will, will maintain strictly email uh, for now because if we give them WhatsApp number, I'm my bombard the list more. So, email for now, inshallah. So, if you need the email, inshallah, we'll send it to Agbele and uh, we'll also send it to the. Um, the um, the platform for our umus and our sisters inshallah so you can reach out to her via email only please please thank you very much uh, please you can press leave on your devices to end the session thank you very much